and welcome to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast. My name is Carmen and this is my podcast about knitting, crocheting and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. And I am happy to report that I can knit again! My wrist pains are almost completely gone, so I've been knitting um, quite a bit more than last week and I'm excited to show you what I have been making. I've also gotten back into the groove of um, recording some tutorial videos so there will be some new tutorial videos coming up for my Patreon page. More on that later in this episode. First off, I want to show you my finished object. I have one finished object and yes, it is from my gift knitting list that you cannot read from here but I will show you in a bit. <laughs> and it is my home hat. I've lost count of how many home hats that I made. This is my own pattern, the home hat, because let's celebrate the home this year. And this one is very muted in color. And it is for one of my gift recipients who I said um, is not too abundant in his outerwear um, colors. So I think this will be very fitting. And I think last time I was about here and I really can't see it from here. Oh, it's, yeah, I was about halfway right there. <laughs> And now I am done. Uh, I still have to block it, so yeah. But I wove in all of the ends, so I'm calling it done. Um, I still have my one balloon somewhere, so I can block this hat. So I just uh, wash it and then put it over the balloon. Make sure the ribbing isn't too stretched out, or actually, I make sure the ribbing isn't stretched out at all. Um, and um, and it's done. And uh, this gift recipient, um, I'm probably not going to see him this year. Um, but so I'll have to e uh, email. I'll have to mail <laughs> this uh, this hat to him. So I better crack on with that because, um, yeah, postal services are completely overwhelmed. I'm sure it's not only here in the, in the Netherlands, but everywhere. Um, yeah, we just went into, um, a stricter lockdown. Um, so most of the shops are no longer open and we're only allowed two guests each day. Um, so everyone's buying everything online. <laughs> I have bought things online that I I would never buy online, like Christmas cards. Usually uh, it's, it's, I just find it so much fun to go to the stores and browse through all of the Christmas stuff and pick out some cards here, some cards there, and yeah, but now I've just ordered them online. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's not even the online service where you just type your message and it automatically sends. I've just bought the cards and they will get here and then, because I do want to write them myself anyway. So I will have to post this gift. And yeah, or maybe because yeah, I'm not sure if I will be seeing uh, someone that can take it to him, so I might just uh, hold off on that, but um, I hope he will enjoy it. And uh, luckily, the cold months are not over yet, so he'll have plenty of time to wear it after Christmas. Um, so yes, that was my first and last finished object. Um, I do have a lot of progress on some other um, uh, projects. Um, I'm trying to think, I think I showed you one of them last time, the Scrappy Sock project. But before I show you that project, I'm going to mark my progress on my board. So 
here it is, color work hat, which was gift number seven, which is now completed. Ta-da! And I only have the bow ties to go and the mm, hot holder that I'm needle punching. And I will show you later. All right. Scrappy socks. Um, I'm keeping this project in my project bag from Faukje, who is uh, Faukje's wool boutique on Etsy. And <laughs> I'm not keeping the entire project in here because um, it's a scrappy project. And I'm only keeping the current color in this bag because I'm using 80 colors in total, so I would need a much larger bag. <laughs> um, I'm knitting this on 2.25 millimeter needles, and I think this is my um, 80 centimeter length. I often, you know, 80 centimeter is my go-to circular needle length, whether it's for socks or for uh, sweater circumference, um, yeah. And, and of course, chow goo needles. They are the best needles. Um, yes, my favorite needles. Um, these, I'm making these socks with Scapius Metropolis. And look at how fun they are. Scrappy socks. So, I'm gonna show you the inside. I'm weaving the ends in as I go, so that means that I can just cut them off. After I've knit a couple rows, um, I don't cut them off instantly because otherwise I'll knit the next row and then I'll lift the stitch and perhaps undo a little bit. But I am weaving them in as I knit, and I've just recorded a tutorial video about that this morning. Um, the tutorial video will first be going up on my Patreon page, and then um, after a while, I've not um, decided yet when, but after a while it will also be available on this YouTube channel that my patrons get first um, dibs on this, or however you would say it. Um, so yes, I'm so pleased with this. And yes, so it's Capy's Metropolis, and I'm noting down all of the colors. <laughs> so if you want to make exactly the same socks, then you can, you can. And um, I am making these, so they are all leftovers. These are all of the colors that I haven't used yet in this project so far. Um, so they are all leftovers but still still pretty much um, like this one has a lot left. This one just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do much with this. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And these are all scraps from my Around the World sweater. Um, I used almost all of the colors for this. Um, I didn't use all of them simply because my sleeves were long enough and the body was long enough, or actually too long. Um, yeah, so I didn't get to um, use all of the colors. I think I still had about six unused. Uh, so it has over 70 colors in here, and I just love it. Um, but of course, with the, with these leftovers, I thought, okay, should I knit another sweater? Like, just do... Not color work, but just do um, simple knitting until it runs out, and then pick the next color. I might still be able to do that. Maybe if I add in another ball, I don't know. But I thought I at least want scrappy socks with this. 
So that is what I'm doing. Oh, now I'm actually thinking, what if I knit a scrappy sweater and then choose one main color and I'm doing one stripe of the main color and then a scrappy stripe. One stripe of the main color, a scrappy stripe. Because that would be a whole, um, that would be more, like less crazy in terms of color overwhelm because this is just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of color and I'm getting more used to it. Uh, I love wearing it. Uh, but I think I would also like to have a sweater that's more toned down. Um, so that might be a fun idea. <laughs> I'll have to write that down. Um, yes, so scrappy socks, I'm almost at the heel and, um, at first the weaving in that I did wasn't that neat. So here the lines are a little bit zigzaggy. Can you see that here and there? But then I tried a new technique and look, it's much more neat. You still see that this side is a little bit more, um, has more texture than this side, which is where I did not have to weave in any ends. Can, you can still see the difference, but also I haven't blocked this yet, so I'm hoping that that will solve itself, but it looks much neater than this area. Yeah. And just a scrappy project is a lot of fun to pair colors and see how they react to each other, because these first colors, I mean, I love this. I love it. So I'm thinking, okay, this is actually a good swatch to see how colors react uh, to each other. Um, and then I can use that color palette for another thing. So that would be a lot of fun. And also somehow I got the Dutch flag in here, even though now it's not, it's not really the Dutch flag because it's light pink and then a light blue, but still. <laughs> could be kind of Dutch um, yes but I'm just enjoying these very very much and um, yeah the hardest part is to pick the next color yeah <laughs> but if you're making these then you won't have that problem because I have the list right here and um, so the Metropolis mini pack that I use is no longer available, um, but also you shouldn't buy that just to knit these socks because that would be too expensive <laughs> for a pair of socks. But you can um, you can choose an area of this sock that you like, and then um, buy a few full-sized balls of those colors. Or if you already have the color pack at home, then this is the ultimate project. And I do hope that they will bring them back. And maybe they will. I have also cast on another sock for another tutorial video, which is this sock. I'm actually not sure if I showed you already last week. I don't think so. I think I started this over the weekend. Um, so it's a very simple sock. I had already knit the toe for something else that did not work out. Um, but I knew better than to rip out that toe because I'm going to use the same stitch count every time. And yeah, knitting the toe takes a long time. <laughs> so I just um, rip back until the very last. Uh, round of the toe and then put in my new needles and started this sock and uh, this yarn um, I don't have the label here, but it is Regia um, I think it's uh, the color is called festival or something um, But they are patterned socks. So 
kind of self-striping but not every color is a stripe um, you can see that the uh, pink stripe has some smaller stripes in there and this green is also not a solid stripe but yeah it's just a lot of fun and uh, yeah it keeps you entertained while knitting and this sock uh, I'm knitting this one for the toe up gusset heel tutorial um, so the the um, heel that I have used for my subtle sock collection and you can still get this ebook in my pattern store and obviously these are color work socks so the gusset here is striped um, the gusset on this sock is obviously not going to be color work it's just going to be this yarn uh, I thought that would be easier for the tutorial um, and because you might be it might be easier to adapt a regular sock tutorial to a color work sock than if I did a color work sock tutorial it maybe wouldn't be as easy as easily adaptable for a regular sock anyway um, so the toe up gusset heel is um, creating a gusset doing a short row heel and then knitting a heel flap and then continuing your sock and it's just especially handy for color work socks because it gives you a little bit of extra room for the heel which um, which does not stretch out your color work here uh, for a regular short row heel my color work socks well now I've gotten the uh, sizing correct so it doesn't stretch anymore but if you use a small size that is too small for you you call your color work will stretch like this and it will distort and um, with this gusset you have a little bit more room so it doesn't distort so it just it stays pretty when it's on your foot and uh, for regular socks you know it's just more comfortable um, usually I do a 60 stitch sock but with this heel I can do a 56 stitch sock which is uh, more fitted around my foot and my toes uh, so that fits much better and then uh, I create more room with the gusset so that I have enough room for the heel otherwise uh, with a 60 stitch sock the heel would fit perfectly but for my toes the socks would be a little bit too baggy and yeah it's just it's just a little bit sloppy um, so with this um, with this heel you can get a better fitting sock and also it's just a new heel to try and I'm almost I'm always down to try new heels especially if they're easily uh, memorizable so this tutorial will also be coming to my patreon page very very soon and I'm also knitting these on 2.25 millimeter needles 80 centimeter length uh, but the cable is different as this is from my interchangeable set from Chowgu which is the uh, mini the red lace mini and um, that's the sock interchangeable sock needle set and the cable is very very um, flexible um, and very thin I actually like the regular the fixed circular uh, cable I like that a bit better because this can sometimes just feel a little bit flimsy but also it's just it has no memory at all so no kinks no curls um, it's still a very nice cable um, but yeah if I have fixed circulars in that size then I will use the fixed circulars and now a another new cast on and one that I have been obsessed with um, since starting it I cannot put it down I take it with me to bed I never knit in bed but this <laughs> this work in progress I want to knit on it as much as I can um, see if you can guess what it is it's a sweater this is the neck and 
looks like a fade and it's got a lot of ribbing okay I'm gonna, just gonna say it because <laughs> Um, this is my Spectre sweater, uh, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, which I've talked about in previous episodes, and I will again put the picture up here. Um, it's a beautiful sweater, um, you know, Hohi's patterns are amazing, but this sweater I just had to buy it as soon as it was out. Um, and when I was opening my advent calendar this year, and I heard that it was going to be a fade, I thought, Ooh, I have enough meter rich here to make a sweater and I have this beautiful uh, fade sweater pattern in my library why not do it well <laughs> let me tell you why not because this is actually a very bad idea um, the original sweater uses four colors um, so it's written for um, just 100 gram skeins uh, and then in a fade set and uh, last week someone asked me where I where you could get um, fade sets because the original fade sets have sold out which makes sense because it is it's not a new pattern um, but you can get fade sets from many many indie dyers I know that Wolmet Fierve uh, I'm using her yarn for this uh, she often has fade sets not at the moment but um, yeah she just loves doing those so she'll have fade sets pretty often um, another good uh, source for fade sets is Stephen and Penelope um, the yarn shop from Amsterdam but they you know they have a great online store um, and if you search fade in their uh, search bar then you will get a lot of fade sets um, that they have in stock and if you can't find anything there you can always go on Etsy and type in um, hand dyed yarn fade and then I always filter for shops uh, in Europe because I just don't want to pay a lot of shipping uh, because most of the shops on Etsy are um, American or, or Canadian or at least you know across the pond <laughs> and uh, I don't want to pay a lot of shipping and then you know usually when it gets here I have to pay import uh, customs whatever so um, yeah, so I usually just filter on Europe or whatever. You can find a lot of fade sets there as well. Um, but yes, I decided to do this with my Advent fade. Um, I have now, today is the 17th, so I have unwrapped 17 skeins so far. This was number one. So it started very dark and number two number three and I'm now working on four and then five has a little bit of yellow in there then six has more yellow seven even more and then <laughs> eight through fourteen is basically a blob of yellow um, Still, you know, they work. Uh, I should have picked them up the other way around because now you can only see the tags. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of yellow. Um, yeah, I didn't find the transition between these two as great. I thought, oh, maybe I swapped a day. But uh, I think if you're actually fading them, you don't really see, like, stripe or anything it's all very gradual um, so this one is a lot more brown and then mustardy and then also mustardy <laughs> and then uh, a little bit more green and then green with some blue in there so I thought oh are we transitioning to blue and then no <laughs> Also yellow and then it started to really fade again into um, kind of orangey beige and now it's more orange and then today I really love this color so 
it's kind of a salmon salmon gold <laughs> yeah so um, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be using all of the yellows because uh, that's going to be around the most prominent uh, area of the sweater and it's not my favorite color um, so I'm not sure if I will use all of the yellows but um, I also don't have enough yardage for my size if I leave them out so I think I have to use them but we will see because usually I don't knit the uh, pattern as long as um, I mean usually I don't knit a sweater as long as the pattern suggests because I'm very petite so um, yeah I'll just have to do some calculations <laughs> uh, speaking of calculations I had to do some gauge math for this sweater and um, yes gauge math just hurts my brain um, <laughs> Uh, where's my book? So I wrote it all down in here in my notebook and the pattern gauge, get this right, the pattern gauge is 23 and a half stitches and 35 rows. My gauge was 30 stitches and 40 rows. Yes, uh, I did use a smaller needle because I just really like this needle size uh, so but but still I didn't see it coming because I am quite a loose knitter but I think that Hohi might be a, an even looser knitter because yeah uh, because I tried again with the uh, recommended needle size and it was still my gauge was still too tight yeah even though I consider myself a loose knitter anyway um, but <laughs> I decided to go ahead with the smaller needle because I just really like this fabric and um, this is super wash and super wash yarn stretches a lot and with the recommended needle size 3.25 millimeter the swatch was just I don't know it was too holy I thought okay I'm not gonna enjoy a sweater in this fabric because I uh, perhaps it will get even looser after first wash um, so I thought okay I'll just use my favorite needle three millimeter and this creates a fabric that I like so that's great um, what I'm worrying about now is that my gauge might be looser on the actual project than it was for my swatch which it often is but I just yeah so um, I might have to rip this out and start all over again but I'm really enjoying it so yeah I don't mind but here comes the thing right so I have a very tight gauge so the the size that I would knit, which is the fourth size in the pattern, which is a which is a large, um, it would be way too small with my gauge. So um, I reverse calculated which size I would have to knit with my gauge in order to get the same bust measurement as the fourth size, and it is the seventh size. So I'm knitting a 3XL to get an L measurement with my ridiculously tiny gauge. So, yes, but what I had not considered was that if I'm knitting the seven size, then I'm also going to need the same yardage for the seven size, and I don't. <laughs> And here comes another but, but <laughs> I'm not knitting as many rows uh, for the seven size because that would be too long because my row gauge was not as much off. <sighs> yes, so I'm just in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to knit until the sleeve separation then take it off the needles, put it on some waste yarn, block it, and then put it on, and then see. And if that is way too loose, 
then I might knit the sixth size. Um, but it might also be okay. Uh, and I, I saw the project pages and um, I noticed that the way the sweater is supposed to fit might not be how I want it to fit. I just don't think I would be comfortable with a more or less fitted sweater with vertical lines. I don't think I would be comfortable wearing that. So um, yeah, if it has lots of positive ease, I think that will look even better. Um, I saw a project page by someone who uh, knit a version of a Spectre sweater with, I think, way more positive ease than it was recommended, and it had kind of a boxy fit, like Hohi Locatelli's boxy sweater, and it just looked so great. So I'm hoping that I will have more or less the same fit as that. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, excited to try it on, but um, I'll have to knit until sweater, uh, until sleeve separation in order to do that, because um, now I can't really, I can't really tell. So I am now knitting a cable row and here you can see a really fun stitch with it, which is the butt stitch. And here I am doing some cables. And it's just, it's just really fun. And the fading, so I've also had to calculate <laughs> based on my bro gauge and the length of the sweater, I divided that between 24 colors and then I knew, okay, I can do uh, 12 rounds for each color. And then um, the first three rounds are gonna be the fade in, then six rounds plain, and then the last three rounds are gonna be the fade out. So in my little notebook here, I am tallying every round and checking it off. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just aware that, you know, the amount of modification that I am doing, you know, different yarn, more colors, uh, smaller gauge, um, just mixing and matching a size. Uh, it might <laughs> sound like a horror story to other knitters, but I'm actually really enjoying this sweater. And um, yeah, I can't wait to get to sleeve separation because that's where I get to try it on. <laughs> and again about the yarn, this is by Wolmet Verve, who is a Dutch indie dyer, Sylvia. And <clears throat> these, this advent calendar obviously was a pre-order. You can't order an advent calendar right now, uh, but she has loads of yarns in her shop and sometimes she'll do mini skein sets as well. So um, just keep an eye out and uh, follow her on Instagram so you can see all of her latest yarns. And then the last project that I have been working on is another gift project. And it is not knitting, it's not crochet, it's punch needle, <laughs> it's, it's punch needle, it's punch needle. Um, and you may have seen this in my Christmas vlogs, in my vlogmas videos, and I have almost finished the front. And um, one of you guessed that these were supposed to be cats. Um, yeah, they're very simplistic. But uh, yeah, they're supposed to be cat faces. Um, the other side, I, w I was pondering whether I should use this side or this side, but then here it, they don't look like much like cats at all. It just looks like an, an abstract thing. Yeah, so I am going to use this side. This is where the cat hats are <laughs> fluffy and here the background is fluffy yeah um and i'm going to make a pot holder 
this is one that I made earlier in the year and as you can see here I also mixed up the texture so the flowers are fluffy but the rest is smooth and that is just um, that depends on which side you punch from <laughs> so if you work like this the back side will be fluffy um, and then I just swapped around uh, in the middle of the project. I still need to do some more rounds um, around the edge so that I will have some more fabric um, because when you sew it together with the backing fabric you will lose a little bit. Um, so if you don't want the fabric to show like this then you'll have to add a, just a few more stitches on the side so I'm uh, I still have to do that um, I am using Ludlopy yarns in um, eight colors yes eight colors and uh, my punch needle is the Lavor punch needle thought I had it here <laughs> ah here it is it's still in the yarn. This is my punch needle, Love War punch needle. Um, I bought these wholesale, um, but I know that Studio Versi, uh, which is a Dutch Etsy shop, Studio Versi, she has some punch needle kits and I believe she also has these. Um, if you cannot find these, I still have about 10 of these, so just email me um, yeah I really like these uh, this is with a bit thinner fabric so usually for the Amy Oxford punish needle which is quite big you would use bigger yarn and then also you would use like monk's cloth um, which has bigger holes or you know um, and this is just um, we call it Aida cloth. <laughs> I'm not quite sure which size this is. Um, but it worked quite well. And uh, I got the hoop from my wholesaler who does Scapius yarns. So whichever store gets Scapius yarns, they can get this hoop as well, and the fabric for that matter. And let loop yarn as well. It's all the same retailer, it's just the punch needle that I got at a different wholesaler. Um, yeah, so I just have to add some more rounds and then find a backing fabric. And then this gift is done! So I am going to mark that as well. Um, and this is going to be the gift for my mother-in-law and I really hope she is not watching. <laughs> because God knows she has been snooping. Uh, I have blocked her and also my sisters-in-law from my Instagram account and she is just waiting for the day <laughs> that I unblock her. Um, yeah, it's killing her that she can't see what I'm up to. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to mark my progress and um, I'm going to mark this as 80% done. Uh, because even though I have only the front almost finished, which technically could could be like half of the project, but uh, from now it will be way less work. Just need a couple more rounds and then the backing, which is not as much work as all of this. Okay, maybe I'll do it at 70%. There. All right, so now I only have to finish this and then knit some bow ties, which I still have not searched on Ravelry, so I hope that there are a lot of patterns and that they are easy and quick because I don't know if you've noticed, but um, Christmas is next week. Yep. <laughs> I, know, I need to get a move on. But honestly, it's, it's not that much more work, so 
I'm going to be fine and I hope you cannot hear my boyfriend talking very loudly on the phone. Um, right, so that was the last thing that I made. And now for some goodies. So I ordered some more yarn and you will already have seen this if you watched my latest Vlogmas video. Um, I'm not uploading Vlogmas every day anymore because it was simply too stressful. I now understand why a lot of YouTubers um, just bulk record a lot of things in advance uh, so that they um, can do this in advance. <laughs> So, um, yes, but I did, um, I did upload one um, video last Monday, and in that video I showed you this new yarn purchase by Studio Say, um, <laughs> why did I pronounce that Dutch? Studio C Yarn by Clara. And this is her Moss colorway. Uh, she has this in a lot of different batches, but um, um, I'm not sure which batch this was, but it is a beautiful grayish green, kind of like a sage, uh, with some darker spots here and there, and then also some blue, some gold, and a little spot of pink here and there. It was very, very beautiful, and I'm going to use this as a main color for a color work sweater. I was going to use it with my advent calendar because it has the same base, um, but that was before I knew that my advent calendar um, was going to be a fade, and in that case, it wouldn't work for color work. So I have some more yarn now. And yeah, so this will be on hold for a little bit as I figure out what to do with it. But I do have some other yarns in um, high twist base. And otherwise, I'll just buy another skein from Clara. And um, yeah, <laughs> it's just really, really pretty. And she sent me a cookie cutter. <laughs> yeah, it's really really cute and she has cookie cutters in the shape of sweaters, socks and hats so uh, go and look up her Etsy shop because she has beautiful stuff and I will link it down below as well. Then I got some goodies from your favorite Canadian podcasters. Um, who are the grocery girls? I'm going to close the door. Right. <laughs> Hopefully you can't hear it now. So from the grocery girls, Tracy and Jody, I ordered, well, I placed my order because I could not get this mug out of my mind. It was just, I had seen it and I thought, no, I should not purchase something from Canada because, oh, you know, climate guilt for shipping overseas and then ah oh, shipping's gonna be that much and then customs and then mm. so i tried to find some thermal mugs um in european stores and i found none or none that were as good as this one so i got it i got it and i'm so happy with it and i think i might have gotten one of the last of these because now they have a new uh, model in their shop, which is uh, uh, silver or black, and it's all sparkly. Um, I mean, they have a silver one and a black one. And this one, it kind of has white speckles all over, and of course their logo. And it has a lid with a um, opening. And whether you're right-handed or, or left-handed, you know, you can place it this way around or the other way around if you want to hold it with your left hand. So, very handy and yes, this is the perfect size. And um, I drink a lot of tea and I like to drink my tea with milk, but in order to put in the milk, um, 
the the tea has to really steep a long time because I find that when I put the tea back in and if I then put the milk in already then it won't steep as well I'm not sure um, yeah and then of course the tea bag says it needs to steep for about five minutes but that's not long enough for me so I let it steep for about 15 minutes um, and then usually I forget about it and then the tea is cold and then do I microwave it? Yes, okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is perfect for my milky tea. And yeah, it keeps it warm for hours and hours. And I have been using it non stop. Non stop. <laughs> I've even taken it to my bedside table because I had not finished my. Uh, my teacup yet for the evening and it was still warm and I thought no I'm not gonna let this warm tea go to waste <laughs> okay but that's not the only thing I got although this was the main event um, I also got some lip balm by Tuft so Tuft Woolens yeah Tuft Woolens in there I think it's a custom um, flavor it's pom-pom pucker and I cannot place the smell. I don't know, it's very warm. Um, it has honey in there and yeah. Oh, and, and cocoa. I think it might be the cocoa butter. Yeah, but I think it's, it smells really nice. And I got a sparkly sticker. I still have to uh, think where I'm gonna place this. And I got one of their Notions pouches, which is faux leather, and you can open it like this, and then you can put your stitch markers in there. And um, I love this because I often have stitch markers just loose in my project bag, and I lose them like that. So yeah, really happy with that. And I got this bag. Uh, which was free with every order over $50 and my order wasn't even $50 uh, before shipping but they got me this bag anyway so thank you I will be using this for my grocery shopping yes and I was so happy um, I, I got the card from um, from the shipping company that and it said okay we have a package for you at um, this address and you'll need to pay customs and I was like oh my god it could be the grocery girls package <laughs> I've also ordered something from Tana's Fiber Arts um, I'll show you more about that when it arrives uh, so I thought okay it could be Tana's Fiber Arts or it could be grocery girls and then it was the grocery girls <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, I've become a complete fan, and I'm really sad that they can't podcast at the moment, but they've been doing uh, live videos on Instagram, which are really fun, uh, <laughs> seeing Jody play around with filters was very funny. <laughs> okay, so those were my goodies, and my camera is overheating, so I'm going to have to cut this short, but I didn't have any more stuff to share anyway. So, um, yes, I'm going to leave you with that. Next week on Thursday, it's going to be uh, Christmas Eve. Well, the day of Christmas Eve, what, the day before Christmas. So I hope that I can still record and it will be my Christmas special. So I don't know. I don't think that I'll have the guts to do it live. I don't think so um, and also because I'll have to do it in the morning and then I don't know if anyone is around uh, so I think next week will still be a recorded podcast but I really really want to do a live podcast one time yeah help me decide <laughs> uh, yeah okay okay so I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode I know it was very rambly but I still hope you enjoy it and I'll see you next time bye, -bye.